Hello, everybody. This is something that I wanted to showcase as a part of um, as a part of the New Year stuff. So as you can see, I have actually used a stable diffusion 1.5 and I'm actually testing on my MacBook Pro M3 Max, which has got 128 GB of RAM. Uh, it is a top notch uh, MacBook Pro that I've uh, that I've got for myself. It's 14 inch, but um, again, I just wanted to test test things out. I wanted to perform the stable diffusion stuff on my new MacBook, and this is the output. As a part of this video, you would actually see how well uh, this whole video has been created. Uh, I also wanted to showcase the power of stable diffusion uh, and the AI, um, and how the videos can be transformed into an artificial intelligent character uh, an enigma or any type of prompt that you actually uh, showcase or put up and uh, you'd be able to see some of the stunning output. Um, as you can see, like uh, this is a nine second video which I've again slowed down. So this is the output that you will be able to see. And you can see the background uh, is different all the time. Well, I could have controlled the background by putting some additional prompts, but I just wanted to try things out and wanted to see how well these things are puffing out. So um, you, can, you can definitely see the power of AI and uh, how the MacBook Pro can perform flawlessly to produce this beautiful output. So this is the individual stuff that I'm using. Um, and again, you know, I'm using After Effects to have a lot of flexibility on uh, doing post-production. But yeah, this gives you a comparison of both the output that I've produced. And uh, in this video, I would also be going through the performances that uh, uh, our MacBook Pro M3 Max can provide to help generating uh, these beautiful, beautiful AI characters. Um, I will also be exporting this side-by-side -side, um, video for, uh, for viewers to see, uh, and it will, it will be easy for you to understand things. Uh, I'll be more than happy to provide every resources that I've used. I'm also using Control Net, and uh, let's dig down more uh, that, uh, let's see the interface of Stable Diffusion and the level of parameters that I'm using. Uh, in order to produce this entire output. So, of course, I'm using Stable Diffusion 1.5, um, and this is, this is a standard, um, standard uh, page that you actually get. Um, in this, I'm using a model called as Analog uh, Madness, uh, version 7.0. As you can see, I'm actually using the Analog Madness realistic model. Um, it has really good um, uh, results. And um, yeah, you can pretty much download this particular model. Uh, the text to input is uh, I'm using. Uh, so let me let me take you down to the point where I'm. Uh, what are the main important steps that I'm taking here? So as you can see, I'm using Control Net. Uh, the Control Net script that I'm using is movie to movie. So this is basically a movie file which I got it from internet. And as you can see. Um, Pretty much, you know, it actually showcases um, uh, the girl is dancing behind a gray background and she's wearing a red jacket and uh, her expressions and the body gesture is something that we want to replicate um, and produce uh, some best output, right? And um, so this is the control net that I'm uh, using. The other important thing is about the prompt. Uh, the prompt is going to play an important role here. So young girl is the prompt. Uh, I'm using uh, open hair, the hair highlights, and pink sweater. So instead of the red, instead of the red sweater, I want a pink sweater to come. And the negative inputs that I'm using is deformed, uh, disfigured, and ugly. Uh, this is just to ensure that I'm not getting any uh, stupid output from the stable diffusion. Uh, the sampling method that I'm using is DPM++ 2M Garage. Uh, the sampling step, I'm just using 20. I could have increased it to uh, 25, 30 as well, but I just wanted to try it out that how well it actually works. Um, although the video is uh, rectangle, which is uh, 16 by 19 uh, frame, 
uh, resolution. But here I'm just trying to limit my output with width and height of 5 and 2 and 5 and 2. CFG scale, I'm leaving it as it is, as 7. Uh, seed, I'm using as minus 1, which is the default. You could have changed something else. The most important thing that I'm actually using is the control net version 1.1, which is the latest one. Uh, the important thing that you have to remember while producing the output through control net is you have to click on this enable and pixel perfect. Um, the preprocessor that I'm using is the line art realistic, uh, which is the model that you need to download. Uh, and uh, the model I'm using is the control uh, net line art uh, SD 1.5. Uh, which is again can be downloaded from the GitHub. Let me know if you guys do not have the link. I'll be more than happy to provide that. Um, then uh, these are the default uh, parameters that you can actually set it up. Um, then you click on the generate. Now, while you do a generation, uh, if you can go to your terminal window, this terminal window will provide lots and lots of information about everything which is possibly happening. So every second of the video has got number of frames. So even if you go with like uh, 25 frames per second, so nine into 25 will produce around 225 frames. And uh, so those individual frames are being rendered uh, based on the inputs provided in our uh, text to image. So you can see almost every particular image is nothing but the replica of what we get as an output. So you can see the utilization of the GPU and CPU. So you can see that 74% of the GPU is being used by Python and CPU is around 46%. So this actually pretty much gives you an understanding that um, how much load the system is uh, taking up. So it's, it's fairly, I mean, it's, it's not maxing out the CPU and it's not even maxing out the GPU as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this beautiful um, video on stable diffusion running on MacBook Pro M3 Max with 128 GB of RAM. And um, well, I hope you also had a good chance to learn a lot of things about how the control net can be used and um, how control net actually can produce, um, can help us to produce some of the best outputs. Uh, by making sure that image is still retaining its uh, body position and it is able to give uh, some uh, good output. Uh, the other thing that definitely worth trying is different models. So currently I'm, I'm just using analog matters. But yeah, if you guys have different models, uh, feel free to use it. Um, again, I'm using pink sweater. You could, you could use shirt. Uh, you can have like, you know, black hair and uh, yeah, the possibilities are definitely endless. Uh, there are a lot of things that can be done, but yeah, this is first video on stable diffusion of the year 2024. Again, I wish everybody a happy new year and I pray for everybody that everybody's year becomes so prosperous and everybody enjoys um, uh, progression in their life. Thank you so much. Uh, and bye for now from Sydney.